come to my upcoming seminar here in Phoenix, Arizona on November 3rd. This will be a three-day seminar and I'm gonna be sharing the way I do my cover-ups, true grays, and color. If this is something you're interested in, head over to my website for more information and to purchase your ticket. Limited seats are available, so make sure to buy your ticket ahead of time. Thank you so much and I'll see you very soon. Let's go! How's everybody doing? Welcome back to my channel. This week, I am going to be doing a really challenging cover-up. So with that being said, let's get this day started. Let's go! Okay, here we go. Today, I have a consultation with my client that's getting a cover-up. He's getting his forearm covered up with I don't know what yet. All I know is that he is open to my idea, so... Me he perdido tantas veces después de perderme en tu piel. Yo vengo con más de buena para mi pueblo. Cate un poco más. Me llamo en esta vez. En donde muchos quieren me quedo caído. Look what I found. Look what I found. Wifey's socks. What do they have? Minnie Mouse. Cute as f. Alright, we gotta change the vibe a little bit. The day had already started with such a good energy, so I knew this consultation was going to be amazing. This is probably 10 years, 15 years old? Um, probably 10 years. 10 years? Yeah. First question is, what is your first uh, idea? Uh, anything Tim Burton. By the end of the consultation, we decided to do Frankenstein to cover up this challenging tattoo. So who approached who? <laughs> That's the question. He approached me. What? <laughs> What's that? Really? Look at you guys now. What's your plans? It is a tough cover-up. Definitely tough. I think the concept is gonna help me a lot. That's a sick ass rooster with a bunny. <laughs> <laughs> it's a bunny riding a rooster, bro. It is hot. What are you talking about? It's so fresh outside. My car so is a 1010 right now. 1010? 1010. It's so hot. I mean, what? I mean, 110, 110. <laughs> as soon as I got home, I decided to start doing my stencil so I wouldn't have to worry about it the next day. Don't expose me! What? I'm eating Burger King! <laughs> my students can't see this. <laughs> it's Burger King and enchiladas. Enchiladas are meal preps. Those are healthy, so good. As soon as I started doing the stencil, I knew that I had to make it as simple as possible. There is many lines on my client's tattoo that me doing a busy stencil was going to end up making me feel stressed and confused. So the best approach was to stencil only the most important parts of the face. I got my stencil ready to go, so I just gotta do this print it out, start sizing it up. I'm gonna work in the dark for a little bit. It gets way too bright in here. What I do need is some music. It's a new line for me, yeah. The new dog, the new day. I like this size. I really like this size, but we'll see when my client gets here. I might need to go a little bit bigger or a little bit smaller. Who knows? As far as my setup goes, I want to make sure that I have a lot of dark tones and dramatically switch to my bright gray tones because I know that this tattoo is so dark, it won't let me do a smooth transition from dark to light. A razor. Jesse, you got a razor? Can I have one? <laughs> Are you ready? I'm ready. Have a seat. Relax. This is your throne. It's okay if I fall asleep, right? It's okay if you fall asleep. I did a little pre-shave, but I know you guys always shave before. Oh no, you're good, yeah. No quería estar como Chewbacca. You're getting a tattoo with me after 10 years or seven years. I'm glad I can give you the challenge. Oh, it is a challenge. Yeah. <laughs> it is a challenge. Um, the way I'm going to approach it is using my 7 round liner with a voltage of a 5.0. I thought about using a 14, but honestly, I need a lot of texture and really tight areas. There's a whole bunch of lines across the whole forearm, so I need to create tighter uh, texture because my 14 round liner is a little bit thicker. It creates more of a thicker texture which is not going to help me in this situation um so i'm going to go ahead and start it with my contrast here on the corner how's that oh great easy huh magical <laughs> hands <laughs> as of right now what i want to do is pretty much just test how dark the tattoo underneath is and see what tones i'm going to be using <laughs> Thank you. 
As soon as I was done with the neck area, I figured out the sequence that I want to execute this tattoo. I realized that my client's tattoo is helping me to create that gray medium tone that I'm missing. It's also giving me extra texture to cover it up a little bit easier. But in all honesty, this cover up is really, really challenging. As soon as I started doing the eye sockets, everything started coming together, so I decided to call it a day after I was done with this area so I can finish the rest the next day. Look at that beer. Luscious beer. Quite fashionable. Oh, that shit wiggled. <laughs> Does it separate? Oh, oh. <laughs> it's I finished tattooing, it was a really good day, uh, but this is not the reason I'm recording. The reason I'm recording is because what the f is this? What is this? Bro, I'm burning. I'm melting. On the second day, all I'm going to be doing is doing exactly what I did day one, which is doing a whole bunch of black to do the contrast, dramatically switch into my brightest gray, and take advantage of my client's tattoo to give me that medium gray tone. The reason why I booked my client for two days back to back to do this forearm cover up, it is because it's such a challenging cover up that I needed to take my time, breathe, relax, and step back to make sure that I was not going too dark or not using enough contrast to make the previous tattoo disappear. Thank you so much for coming back and watching this brand new video. I really appreciate you. So with that being said, if you're a tattoo artist, I hope you learned something from this video. And if you're a tattoo enthusiast, I hope you were entertained. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys on the next video. Peace.